Hello, we continue looking at the lab number seven. Uh, this is the third of the lecturettes on this. Uh, so far, what we've done is you've been working on the initial questions on page 84 of the manual. You've done uh, definitions from A to uh, E, and then also definition H. And now you've started graphing this particular graph. And just to remind you, you have it so that the radius of the moon takes up five of those grids. One, two, three, four, five. And that's a unit of one. And then one, two, three, four, five, a unit of two. And one, two, three, four, five, minus one, and so forth. We have the x and y axis. Again, try to make your graph look as much uh, as this as you can. These are the data points from that table number one, which is on page 86. Sorry about keeping going out of the field of view of the, of the camera. It is a strange time. We do the best we can. But I want to make sure that we reference the book and so you know where we're working. So you're using this to graph basically uh, the information for a orbiting satellite that was placed around the moon and the orbital data is given in that table. First column has to do with the time that the data is taken. The second one and third one are the coordinates x and y of where the satellite will be found at any particular time of the orbit. And so now you've gotten to that point. Now what we did talk about on the last one was basically elliptical information. So the geometry of an ellipse is really what I'm trying to say. And so recall that with this experiment number seven, that you have this elliptical orbits. So here's the elliptical orbit. And so remember what that means is that the satellite is always found going around the moon on that curve. It never be found on the inside and on the outside. And what we said is that every ellipse always has two points called focus and a symmetric one over here, a focus. And so you have two foci. That's the way you do a plural for the word focus. A little bit darker here. There's always two foci. And one location uh, is where the moon is. And the moon is centered on one of the foci. Now the center of the moon on the graph is centered on the origin of the XY coordinate system. So you know where one of the foci is. We don't know where the second one is. Now what we did remember is we went ahead and said let's draw a line through both foci. And if the line was, uh, if everything was drawn carefully, this half would look like that half. And so one of the things you're going to do is determine uh, where to draw that line, which we call the major axis. And what we said, recall, is that is equal, has a length of the major axis to be equal to what we call 2a. It's just a symbolic way of giving what that length is. For this drawing, 2a is about a foot. For satellite, it'd be millions of meters. And so one thing we do in order to, for you to draw this is these are the things that you have to do for drawing the major axis. Draw the major axis. And what it is is it has to pass through the origin. That's where one of the foci is. That's the center of the, of the moon. The second thing is it should uh, make, uh, cut it. That means this whole thing, cut it into 
two equal parts, meaning that this half should look like that half. So if I did that, here is where I am doing it pretty poorly, and you'll be able to see this. Let's say I went ahead and, and I took care of the first obligation, passed us through the origin. But it's hard to see maybe, but this half is smaller than that half. So I didn't do a very good job in making both halves look the same. And so you have to kind of eyeball that pretty carefully. And I'll show you a little trick that I did to help me when I actually draw, drew it reasonably well. So the first thing is you draw the major axis. And I'm, I'm going to show you everything drawn in a moment. Once you've drawn the major axis, where would you draw the actual second foci? This one right here. Well, one thing I do know is that this length right there has to be equal to that length right there. So that length has to be that length. So once you draw this, you measure with a ruler that length and just measure from this point over, and that should be equal to the same length. It's all symmetric. So again, what you do is then you draw in the second foci, which happens just to be in empty space. There's nothing there in space, but every ellipse needs two foci, and we'll explain why as we go through the lab. So what we have here then, guys, is the next step in what you're doing here. By the way, uh, I'm going to make this due a week from Wednesday, and I'll keep uh, saying more about that as we go along. But it's not due this week. You're going to have plenty of time to finish this. So let me say it again. First off, you draw a major axis. Make sure that draw, you draw it through the center of the moon at the origin the XY coordinate system. Draw it so it has equal parts up and down. Then you measure how far it is from the orbit over to the foci and go to the other side and measure from the orbit out to where the second foci is. Those lengths should be equal if you could draw carefully. I'm a terrible drawer. You know that, guys. You know, I'm having to try to draw and explain and you don't have a chance to say Michael what are you actually drawing I really apologize for that I wish it was easier so now what have we done we got the major axis in there we have the minor axis now what we do is that we go ahead and we determine the center of the major axis so let's say that this is the center of the major axis right there just, you know, you measure the length of this whole thing, divide it in two, measure out to there, and you'll find that center point. So I'll say it again. You measure the length of the major axis, take that length and divide it by two, and then put a little mark there where that uh, halfway is, point is. And now what we want to do is we want to draw us uh, draw the minor axis. And the way that we do that is we draw carefully a line through the center of the major axis, and it should be perpendicular at 9 degrees to the major axis, and this is the minor axis. And remember, the minor axis has a length of 2b. So that means this length right here is b, this length right here is b, and just so we're complete, this length right here is A, and this length right here is A. Okay. It's a little messy, but I hope it's clear. Just look at it carefully. And just keep looking over this. You have this video that has been filmed for you. You can look at it many times. Just Go a little forward and then pause it. Go back if you need to, make, if you don't understand it completely. But spend the time necessary so that you get everything that you need in order to understand what to do. So, 
you draw in the major axis, you draw on the second foci, and then you draw the minor axis. And again, this half should look like that half. And that's a lot of the geometry of this. There's only one last geometry that is hard to show here, so to make it even more messier. And that is the length between one focus to another focus is just called 2D. So I'm going to redraw this to my, try to make it a little clearer for you. And then I'm going to talk to you about how do you measure lengths. We have a table to fill out. And that table is on the bottom of page 88. So let me go ahead. Let's erase this. And I'll go ahead and try to relabel this to be a little neater. And I'm going to define a couple of terms for you. Eventually, I'm going to get good at this. So here is our elliptical orbit. I'm going to get good at this eventually. I do it so much. And here is a focus. And the moon is centered there. On your coordinate axis is at the origin. And then symmetrically over here is the second focus. Let me put it out here a little bit further. Try to draw it symmetrically. And then we draw a line through this. In all this drawing, guys, you should be using pencil on the graph. Don't use pen because you will make mistakes and you need to be able to erase. So everything should be done in pencil. So this is the major axis. And right there is the center. And this is the minor axis. Because of the symmetry of this, that length of the minor axis, half of it, is equal to that half. That half of the major axis is equal to that half. And we know that this has a length of A. And this half length of the major axis is known as the semi-major axis. And it has a length of A. And there's a second one there, so there's two semi-major axes. Each of them has a length of A, since the whole thing has a length of 2A. This length right here is the length B, and that's the length up there of B, and this is known as the semi-major axis. And then Again, finally, we do know that the total distance between the two foci is 2D, which means that's D and that's D. This is D and that's D because it should be completely symmetric if I could draw, meaning everything looks the same on either side. So, one thing we know is if we look on page 88, answer the two questions on the, uh, uh, excuse me, the question on the top of page 88. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about eccentricity before I leave this today. And then I'll uh, let uh, in this particular lecture at, yes, more caffeine, living on caffeine. I've been gone for a day or so trying to set up some more computational tools so that, you know, trying to learn as we do this thing. So one thing that I'm going to give you, you can find this in the back appendices, but I'll go ahead and just let you know. The moon's radius in meters is 1.6. 
excuse me, one thousand uh, one million seven hundred and thirty seven thousand meters. That's the radius. And so you can put that in where it asks for the moon's radius in meters. The moon's diameter, just take that number and, and multiply by two, and that's what that is. And so the moon's radius is that. And so what is this asking for? Um, the table two at the bottom of the page 88 right here. So it's this particular table number two. And so the things you're going to measure is the moon's diameter, the moon's radius. You already have that up above, so you can just go ahead and ignore that. You already have that. You want the length of the major axis, the semi-major axes, the minor axes, the semi-minor axes, and the distance between the two foci. So these are all things that you can see. Ignore the moon diameter, moon radius, that's above there. And so let me show you how you're going to do this. And now let me go ahead and place on here what I drew, which I think reflects a more reasonable graphing of the major minor axes. So notice something. Is past, this is the major axis right here. In other words, this has been tipped up. Here's the foci through the center of the moon. Here's the second foci right there. And maybe I can make this a little clearer. Here's the center of the moon. That's the focus right there. And what I do in order to measure this is I use a ruler. And of course my ruler's not here. Let me grab one right here. And what I have here is a ruler. And of course there's inches over here with fractions and then there's centimeters here. And you want to use the centimeter side because to try to do some of the things with all the fractions would make it very difficult. So you need this ruler that has the centimeters. And what I do is I note that the radius of the moon is given from the origin out to the unit one on the axis. So what I do is I measure how many uh, centimeters one radius of the moon is equal to. And it looks like to me to be about 3.4, 3.5. So I'll just say 3.5 centimeters. And that'll be the same for you. It should be the same. It might be 3.4, so double check me. And so what I do is I write that down on a, on a sheet of paper. So what I write here on a sheet of paper, I'd write down one unit of the x of the x and y axis is 3.4 centimeters on my ruler. Then what I do is I just start measuring everything that I have to measure. I measure the length of the major axis. I get that length. It's going to be over 23 centimeters. I write that down and say major axis. I measure the length of the semi-major axis, which should be half of that length I just measured for the major axis. I measure in centimeters, and I write it down, the number of centimeters for the minor axis. Write that down. Then I measure the distance, excuse me, also of a semi-minor axis. That's half the length of the minor axis. And then I measure the distance between the two foci. So let me say this one more time, just to make certain it's very clear, and let me do it very slowly, make certain you get this, so you get the details. Number one is I take my centimeter side of the ruler, and I measure from the origin to unit one of the graph, which is one radius of the moon. And so I put down one unit equals about 3.4 or 3.5 uh, centimeters. You measure that yourself. 
then what I do is I go ahead, I measure the number of centimeters for the major axis, the number of centimeters for the semi-major axis. I measure the number of centimeters of the minor axis, the number of centimeters for the semi-minor axis. And then finally, I measure the number of centimeters for the distance between the two foci. And so what I do then, I now have those numbers in centimeters listed on that sheet of paper. I simply divide each of those measurements for those different parts of this graph by 3.4 centimeters, which is equal to one unit on the graph. One unit, two units, one unit, two units, three units, so forth. And that's what goes in that first column after each thing that you're going to measure on table two. The major axis, semi-major axis, the minor axis, semi-minor axis, and the distance between the foci. And that's in table two. It's the number of these units that each of those are equal to in length. And you're measuring right along them so that you get the right amount. Then we remember that the one unit right here is for the radius of the moon. And remember what I said is that the radius of the moon is 1,737,000 meters. So I take the number of units and I multiply it by that number. So let me go ahead and see if I can write this up for you. Just take it nice and slow. So, one measure length of the radius. All these measurements are in centimeters. Then two measure the length of the major axis, semi-major axis, the minor axis, and semi-minor axis, and the distance between the two foci. So you have those one, two, three, four, five, plus the original one, six total measurements that you made in centimeters. Take each one of those, number two, divided by the number of millimeters in the length of the moon's radius, and that will be the number of total units that you place down there, or lengths, in the uh, in table number two. And then multiply those numbers of, of units in the first column of table two by the number of meters in one unit. So that's the number of units into one unit. Fill out that table number two Delete and don't worry about the moon's diameter and the moon's radius. That's listed above. And then once we actually have that, then what we can do is continue on and begin to look at some ideas of eccentricity. And I think I'll hold that out for the next uh, lecture since this is getting up there in the amount. So this is what I'm going to do in the next lecturette.
Number one, refresh this a little bit, remind you how you're doing this, talk about eccentricity, and then we can start working on proving using this orbital data of the satellite going around the moon, Kepler's laws of planetary motion. And remember, we call it laws of planetary motion. Why it's so important today is simply because these laws are held true for any type of orbital motion. If it's the moon going around the Earth, if it's a satellite going around the moon, if we are orbiting around a planet, whatever is orbiting generally and held in orbit by gravity, these laws basically are what are, are obeyed. So they're very general laws of orbiting and orbitals. So guys, hope you're doing well. I'll continue with this. Remember, just go back and forth, and I will refresh this again on the next lecturette to make certain that uh, you don't hear this just one time. I'm here. Keep e emailing. I'll get uh, once I post a couple of more lecturettes. I'll email you all to let you know to start looking at this. Continue working. Again, uh, the due date will probably be for this lab will be a week from this coming Wednesday. I should have all the lecturettes for this out by the end of the weekend. So you have all the information that you'll need to finish this lab. Then you just have to do it step by step, carefully doing what, uh, checking what you're doing. And if you have contact with your group, your study group, uh, and your lab group from the laboratory, why don't you try to get a hold of them and work in unison and help one another? Don't copy them, but get some aid. Have someone to discuss this with. I uh, will grade lab number six and get that out. Everyone, this missing lab number six because of, there were some data collection problems. I will get out data to you over the weekend so you can get this done. Uh, exam, uh, the midterm exam, I think I'll make right after spring break so we can get that thing off our back. And I'm going to let you know exactly what will be on that in the next few lecturettes. Take care, guys. I'm here, and I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.